Welcome back everyone. Today we'll recap a 2016 South African horror film named House on Willow Street. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. At the beginning of the movie, we see a girl named Hazel who is sleeping and is awakened by a scary dream. When Hazel was young, there was a fire in her house in which her parents had died and she used to see the same incident in her dreams again and again. Then she gets up and gets a call from her boyfriend Abe who is waiting for her outside. Both of them were planning to kidnap a girl named Catherine, in which Abe's cousins James and Mark were also supporting them. Hazel tells Abe that Catherine's house has an alarm system installed, after which she clicks on Catherine's pics and goes to an abandoned warehouse that they used to be their headquarters. Here they plan to kidnap Katharine after six weeks and demand diamonds from her dad. The expedited time frame worries Mark, who believes it may cause them to make mistakes. On which Hazel and Aid explain to him that they cannot be late than this. After this, the movie is forwarded six weeks when they are all going to Catherine's house at midnight. After reaching there, everyone takes their positions. Aid enters the house and notices that the alarm system is already deactivated and the lights are off. Then he goes ahead and locks Catherine's parents in their room. He then goes to Catherine's room but she does not see him there. Then the door of the closet opens on its own and when A checks there, he sees some strange symbols made there, which he is quite surprised to see. Just then Catherine comes there from behind and Aid points a gun at her. He sees that Catherine's condition seems strange and then James comes from behind and grabs her and they take her away. After reaching the warehouse, they tie her with chains and make her sit on a chair. They had also put cameras there, which Mark is monitoring. Here James realizes that someone is behind him and he goes to check but there is no one there. Hazel tells Abe that she is feeling a bit strange and feels like there is a problem with Catherine. But Abe tells her that there is nothing like that. Now Catherine tells Hazel to let her go from there or else something bad will happen to them. Here James sees a dark shadow when he turns off the lights of the hallway. But when he turns on the lights again, there is no one there. Then after he leaves, we see the spirit of a woman there. On the other hand, Hazel and Aid are shooting a ransom video of Catherine but she refuses for that. Hazel then convinces her by promising the ordeal will end faster if she cooperates. Then Hazel calls her home, but no one answers the call. Hazel calls on different numbers but she is unable to get in touch with Catherine's parents. Hazel thinks that the numbers are wrong but James says that the numbers are correct and all this is happening because of their haste. She then tells Mark to go to Catherine's house to check but he refuses to go. Then Aid says he will soon go on trial for the accidental death of his brother George, and he has to run away from here before that, so they cannot waste much time. After this, he goes with James to investigate Catherine's house. On the other hand, we see Catherine who seemed possessed, and then she turns off all the lights in the warehouse with her powers but those people think that maybe there is a wiring problem. James asks Hazel to check the power as his system was not working. Hazel goes to check the power breaker in the basement where they have held Catherine captive. When she switches on the power breaker, the lights flicker and demonic Catherine haunts her, scaring her terribly. But then she sees that Catherine is sitting in her place, who again asks Hazel to let her go. When Hazel goes near her, she catches her and starts reciting a song that Hazel's father used to sing to her as a child. Catherine tells her more things from the past, like how her parents died in childhood due to burning in a fire. Hazel is very shocked to hear this and locks the basement and comes out, and she was very scared too. Here Mark was also getting some strange sounds, so he comes out to check. On the other hand, James and Aid reach Catherine's house, and this time inside they realize the house is full of decaying food and smells horrible. Then both of them separate and start looking for Catherine's parents. James hears some sounds from the basement and he goes there to check. But when he comes down, he realizes that those voices are coming from a tape recorder. He also finds two dead, mutilated priests there. Here, when Aid goes to Catherine's parents' room, he is horrified to see that Catherine's parents have been gruesomely murdered. Now both of them get scared and try to get out of there. During this, Aid checks that Catherine's photo in the hallway is changing her posture time and again. He starts praying to God in fear and then suddenly he sees the demonic spirit of his brother George there, which he gets very scared seeing. Just then James comes there and both of them tell each other about the dead bodies and word they will be blamed for the murders. They flee the house after grabbing videotapes from the cellar. After this, they start leaving in their car but a short distance away. Aid again sees George's spirit in front. 
due to which their car is disbalanced and they get into an accident. Back at the warehouse, Mark sees someone's footprints, following whom he comes upstairs where he sees the spirit of his dead daughter Sarah who is crying. Suddenly she haunts Mark which scares him and he starts shooting her but that spirit disappears from there. Here James comes to his senses and goes to the forest so that he can bring some help. Later, Aid also regains consciousness and comes to the forest to find James. Just then, James sees the spirit of his dead mother who haunts him and then puts her tongue in his mouth to possess him. Here Hazel, searching for Mark, reaches a room where the door locks itself. Then fire and smoke fill the place and Hazel sees her mother's spirit. But then Mark reaches there and tells Hazel that he had seen the spirit of his daughter Sarah. On the other hand, Aid finds James who was looking very sick. He tells Aid that he saw his mother, after which Aid somehow brings him back to the warehouse. Here James starts foaming from his mouth, so they leave him in a room to rest. Then Aid tells them about all the incidents that happened in that house and says that maybe something was wrong in that house which they have brought here with them. He understands that there is a problem with Catherine as there were dead bodies of the priest in the house which were in very bad condition. Aid says that Catherine had been living alone in that house for a long time and they need to know what happened there. Now James had brought some tapes from the basement of that house and they starts watching those tapes. In the first tape, Catherine tells that she found a demonic symbol in the basement of her house. She says that according to the history of her house, many people have died here. She tells about the death of all the families who have lived in that house since 1940, one of which is also of Hazel's. Hazel's father was Catherine's father's business partner. Mark and Aid are shocked to hear this and ask Hazel why did she hide from them that she used to live in the same house. She says that she wanted to take her share from Catherine's dad so she planned it all. She tells Aid that she told him that she knows everything about that house. Catherine further tells that there is a demonic entity in this house who possesses and swallows the souls of sad and disturbed people. Then she says that two weeks ago she came to know about her pregnancy due to which she started getting disturbed. In the next tape, they see that the demon has started possessing Catherine. The same demonic symbol was made on her body. She tells that some voice tells her to do strange things, after which she begins to wish to do that work. Here in the present, Catherine has been singing a song, which causes a lot of pain to James and he starts bleeding from his mouth and eyes. He was screaming loudly but the rest of the people could not hear any of his voice. In the next tape, Two priests are talking to Catherine's dad and tell him that the demon has chosen this house because it is the furthest point in the world from a holy relic kept in the Vatican. After which they start Catherine's exorcism which fails. Then priest tells Catherine's parents that Terangol is a very dangerous demon. He needs four living souls. After possessing which he will be able to roam freely in this world. He explains that the only way to stop him is to burn his first possession. That is Catherine because the more souls he possesses, the stronger he becomes. Hearing all this, her parents agree to burn Catherine, and when the priest starts burning her, the demon does not allow them to do so and then kills all four of them. Now seeing these tapes, all of them were very scared and they felt that demon would possess them all because they were all disturbed and sad due to some reason or the other. Mark says that they should leave Catherine here and go away and after going some distance, they will inform the police about her. Then suddenly they hear James screaming and runs to see him, but James is not in the room. They then go to the main door to check him and sees that as he exits the door, some unseen force catches him and lifts him high in the air, and then throws him away. Seeing this, Aid runs towards him and Hazel and Mark go to Catherine because they knew she is doing all this. Catherine tells them that there is no way to escape from here, they have to accept that their souls belong to her. She was now completely under the control of the demon and then she attacks them and throws them down. Mark tells Hazel to run away and shoots Catherine himself, which has no effect on Catherine. Then she lifts Mark in the air and tells him that she needs two more souls. If he brings her Hazel and Aid, she will leave him. On the other hand, George's spirit haunts him when Aid is looking for James. Here Hazel is looking for Aid where she sees a way out but she is haunted by her dad's spirit there. Here Aid finds James who was completely possessed. He is about to attack Aid with a knife but Aid shoots him and kills him. Then Hazel also comes there and both of them leave from there and come to the control room, where Mark comes and points a gun at them. James comes alive again and takes out the bullets from inside him. Mark takes Hazel and Aid to Catherine where Catherine attacks them to free herself. Mark finds the key and frees Catherine, after which Catherine is about to possess Hazel and Aid. But Mark realizes his mistake and grabs Catherine and locks her again. Hazel and Aid run away but Catherine grabs Mark and possesses him. 
Here Hazel's mother's spirit tells her the way out, after which she takes Aid to the room where she saw the exit. Aid tries to open it but then Katharine comes there. Hazel shoots her with a shotgun but it has no effect on her. Then the possessed James and Mark also come there and the duct also opens and Aid sends Hazel out of there. He then shoots Katharine but she sends her bullets back towards him, which injures him. Now before Katharine can possess him, he shoots and kills himself. Here Hazel comes outside in the forest and reaches her car and hides in it. She finds Aid's lighter in the car and only then does she see that James and Mark have also come there. Suddenly she sees Katharine behind her who grabs her and is about to possess her when suddenly Hazel's mother's spirit comes there, throws James and Mark away, and burns them both. Here Hazel somehow reties Katharine and then comes out to see that her mother is fighting with James and Mark. Meanwhile, Katharine frees herself and runs away in Hazel not finding her in the car, sets out to find her in the woods. She finds her and hits her on the head and brings her back and locks her in the car. After this, she pours gasoline everywhere and sets it on fire, causing Katharine to burn and die and with this, the movie ends here. Please do like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.